So we just learned the five things we can add to a benzene ring through electrophilic aromatic substitution. And it's fairly simple. You add the chlorine, add a nitro group, add an alkyl group. That's fairly simple. But what if there's already a substituent there? What if there's already a group there? So that's what I have this labeled as effects of substituents. And I won't go into all of the mechanisms. You can look at that and we can prove this, but I just want to show you basically what happens. So basically, the more electron density around the atom directly attached to the benzene ring, the more activating that reaction is. So for example, if we have an NH2, that would be aniline, that would react faster. So let's draw an example of one. So here's aniline, and I'm going to do a chlorination. Um, this reaction would go faster than one that has less electron density. And let's look at X. We'll just put a bromine right there. And if we did this reaction, they both would occur, but the ones on this side that have a more electron density, that have electrons, are more activating. They're faster than regular benzene. The ones that have less electron density, they're more more partially positively charged and it gets stronger and stronger as we go down the list. So these are written in order. So this is the most activating at the very top, the least activating at the very bottom. Uh, they are slower than benzene. So if we were to do these two reactions, the top one would occur much, much faster than the bottom one. Now the question is, where does the chlorine go? So that, that's the interesting part. And as I mentioned, I'm not going to go through all of the um, mechanisms. We could look at the mechanisms and sort of see what happens. But generally what happens is, or what happens is when it's an activating group, the new group will go ortho and para. So you will get two products. When it's deactivating, the new group will go meta. There's one exception to that, and I'll circle that or whatever. Here's your exception. The halogens still go ortho pair. It has to do with the lone pair of electrons that they have. Um, they can do a resonant structure. Um, but otherwise, everything else will form meta. And so if you go through and, and study the mechanism, you can, you'll, this will make a little bit more sense. and You'll sort of see that. But in this case, so when I have aniline, so I'm going to continue having my aniline, I know this reaction right here, this chlorination is going to add a chloro group, but where will it go? Will it go ortho? Will it go meta? Will it go para? Will it go all of them? Will it go to every carbon? Well, let's look. This is an activating group. Activating groups, when the resonance structure in the sigma complex um, is formed, they would prefer to orient themselves having the new product ortho and para. So we will get two products. You can probably imagine para is probably preferred because they're, there's less steric hindrance, they're further apart, but you will get both, so you'll have to answer both. Now let's look at this next one here, a bromo compound. So now we, we're going to continue, well, the bromo will remain, but now we're, once again we're adding a chloro as the new group. Now bromo is in the deactivating, so they will all go meta except the halogens, which are an exception. So once again, in this case, we will get two products, ortho and para. Let's see if I can draw that correctly. All right, now let's change this. I'm gonna be kind of quick and change this. Let's change this to a nitro group. All right, and so now we know nitro is just about the most deactivating group. When you form the resonance structures of the sigma complex, it does not want to form the cation anywhere near that nitrogen because it's already very strongly positive. Um, and so this one, nitro, is in the deactivating group. The nitro group will remain, and now we're adding the new chlorine and it will go meta. Always, 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 and that's what you will get, meta. So what happens if we have more than one substituent? Let's try something like this. Generally speaking, the more activating group would win. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick one of my reactions. I'm going to pick the nitration reaction. And I'm going to look at the product here and I'm going to see, okay, so I still have the hydroxyl group and the chloro group. The more activating would win. I'll circle that right here. The OH is an activating group, so I know the products are going to go ortho and para. So here's an ortho. Here's an ortho, which you'll notice is different. Here you have three in a row here, they're not three in a row, and here's a para, which is also different. So in this case, we will have three products. When we do the, nit the nitration reaction, remember we add a nitro group. So we will have 
three possible places to put a nitro group, ortho and para. Let's look at one more example. So if we had an aniline group that had a chloro group attached to it, and so we're going to do a reaction. I'll pick one of my reactions. I'll do the sulfonation reaction. I'll look who's the more activating. This will be more activating. It's in the activating group. So the new product, so let me write what we started with. So the new product will be, will be added or substituted ortho and para. Notice the para is already blocked. You can only have one group, one substituent on each carbon, so this one's already blocked. So we'll have ortho here and ortho here. But if you'll notice, they're the same. They're the same compound. So I could add them. Let's see, I'll add it right here, running out of room. And it's fine if you write them, but you notice, pay attention that those are, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I added the wrong group. Notice that we're adding a sulfonyl group, SO3H, not a chlorine. I'm writing it backwards here. Um, sorry about that. Notice that these are actually identical compounds. If we were to name them, they would have the exact same name. So you don't really, you, you can show the other one if you want, but you really don't have to show the other one. So here's our product. All right, and we can have three groups or four groups originally and just for, for basic purposes, look at the most activating group, and that will determine whether you'll add the next group, ortho and para or meta.